Carpal tunnel syndrome is the most common mononeuropathy caused by the compression of the median nerve. It currently affects more than 3 million people throughout the world, including the United States. The problems patients and physicians must consider is which is the safest and most effective way to cure CTS. In this documentary, we look at the endoscopic and open approach. The problem patients and physicians must consider is which is the safest and most effective way to cure CTS. Treatment typically varies according to the patient. Two categories to focus on are smokers and full-time employers. Is this your first time having carpal tunnel? Yes. Did you ever smoke or are you a current smoker? Both. Both? Patient A graciously allows us to film his endoscopic procedure. Smokers typically have a higher chance of developing CTS. It is also necessary to devise a plan to avoid narcotic addiction postoperatively. Hi, my name is Josh Simpson. I'm a PA here at Fredericksburg Orthopedic Associates. We definitely see an increase of carpal tunnel with smokers. Um, and then after surgery, we especially see a lot more pain. Nicotine increases the pain response, and we usually have to give them a few more prescriptions of Percocet usually. The risk with narcotics especially is that there's going to be a level of addiction. And with the nicotine, you already have someone who is addicted, so then you worry about them getting addicted to another substance. After the patient is prepped, the marks are made on the hand to ensure that it is the correct hand and the correct procedure. Then the surgeon begins to make its first cut. Well, you make your landmark, so this is important. So when you do an endoscopic carpal tunnel release, right? Mm -hmm. This is the pisiform bone, this is the hook of the hamate. Okay. You have to stay close to the hook of the hamate and you have to aim towards the, the ring finger. So you see I marked where the ring finger goes. But not the middle finger? No, the ring finger, because if you go too far this way, you're at risk of getting the digital nerves. If you okay. go here, it's safer not to get the digital nerves. So you'll see when I aim, I make my incision a little more radially and I go that way, okay. right? So this way, he avoids this big palmar incision and he has a smaller incision. So less scar tissue. Less scarring is the theory of it, and quicker healing. Uh, patients usually prefer endoscopic carpal tunnel over an open carpal tunnel release for the recovery period, specifically that the patients usually have a lot less tenderness in their palm and it improves much faster. We see this uh, usually with our contractors, we see it with cosmetologists, mail workers. They all want to go back to work in a specific amount of time and the best way they can do that is to do an endoscopic carpal tunnel release. Open release is usually preferred when it is a much more complicated procedure, meaning that we think the nerve is more compressed. It's also more certain that we are going to release the entire ligament. The surgeon inserts the scope into the wrist and searches for the median nerve. After locating the ligament, the scope is used to cut the ligament from the bottom up. Doing this, it releases the pressure on the nerve. Although sometimes more convenient for the patient, the surgeon must use skill of hand-eye coordination to find the nerve and cut it transversely. However, the relatively small cut allows for the patient to have quicker healing and quicker return to work. Here, the ligament is fully released. It's released all the way up. Yeah. You see it? There's no sign of anything pushing it. I make sure. Women would choose endoscopic over open carpal tunnels specifically for the reason of scarring. The location of the scar one is in the wrist, so it kind of takes the scarring right off the palm. It can be hidden by a watch or a bracelet. Also, the incision for an endoscopic carpal tunnel release is slightly smaller, which means there's less risk for a keloid, a keloid being an overgrowth of scar tissue that's very visible on the hand or the wrist. For these reasons, patient B decided to go with an endoscopic surgical route. The repetitive movements in her career as a baton twirler, teacher, and social worker could have caused the onset of carpal tunnel syndrome. Along with her pregnancy with triplets, the fluid buildup could also lead to the later onset of carpal tunnel. I did a lot of typing in college, term paper after term paper after term paper and with both masters. So lots of term papers and lots of typing. I had carpal tunnel uh, severely during the pregnancy with the triplet to the point that I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at all. The risk of not treating CTS could be severe. Thenar atrophy causes the depression of the nerve and overall inability to move the hand over time. Hi, in reviewing your nerve study and your ultrasound, I do believe that endoscopic surgery will be best. It will be minimally invasive and it's going to be much better to get you back to work since you are a full-time employer as an office assistant. So if you can open up your hand, we can see that you have started off to get some thenar atrophy in here, which is the um, damage to the nerve. So this is, can be potentially threatening to your motor function of your hand. 
So I want to move the surgery up to two to four weeks, whatever works best for you um, to get you in the schedule, but that is going to be uh, best. So as you can see here, it's more flat when it should be rounded at the base of your thumb. So since you are a full-time employer and you want to get back to work, you know, uh, it can typically range between two to eight weeks. We're going to give you about six to eight since um, the pain, you know, is going to be dependent on you and we're going to see that after the surgery. Looking at concerns of the surgery, you're going to have infection risk and nerve damage and, you know, with that there could be potential damage to blood vessels, nerves, and scarring. However, since this is minimally invasive and a very procedural surgery, we're not looking at a huge risk of that. Um, to help with the scarring, endoscopic is also going to be best, you know, since you want to wear those short sleeve shirts, um, you know, you don't want to be covering those with a watch or anything. So the scarring will be minimal since it's a very small cut. So um, looking at that pain management and um, infection risk, we're gonna give you anti-inflammatories and antibiotics. And also we're gonna pre-fill a prescription of Percocet for you so you can use it directly after your surgery. Refill when needed, however, you're gonna have to come to the office um, post-operatively for us to check on that and how that's going. The quickening of the recovery time for you to get back to work is going to include a gel flex splint, which you can wear to decrease inflammation, and also a post-operative range of motion exercises, which we will give you all after the surgery. So um, that's pretty much it. That's I think is going to be the best option for you. Do you have any questions on how it's going to work or potential? No. Um, just when can we get it scheduled? Hi, so looking at your ultrasound and your nerve test, I do believe that endoscopic will be best for your pain management and also your return to work. So in looking at that, you have a pretty mild case of carpal tunnel. I'm not seeing any atrophy right now. However, eventually that is um, a potential happening. So we want your surgery to be within three months or a year, whatever works best with you. So since you are employed, we're gonna look at six to eight weeks. However, you know, two weeks, We've seen it happen before if you continue on the correct um, methods to recovery. So with that, um, for at-home recovery post-operatively, you're gonna have a gel flex splint which you can use and also a range of motion exercises that you can do. So we'll see you um, post-operatively in the office and kind of see how that's going there. So for pain management, uh, the thing is um, for smokers, sometimes the threshold can be less, so pain could be increased. So with that, we're going to give you a pre-filled prescription of Percocet, and depending on how it goes after surgery, we want to keep that in mind, you know, um, to avoid any further pain or anything like that. So it's going to be important to do the exercises as well. So with that, I think that would be the best um, way to go for your carpal tunnel. And also looking at surgery, you know, there's always going to be the concern of an infection risk or also potential nerve damage mostly to the blood vessels, nerves, and potential scarring. However, since this is endoscopic, it's going to be minimally invasive and hopefully help you with your pain management because it has been proven to have less scar tissue and also quicker back to work time, quicker recovery, et cetera. So do you have any questions? No. Thank you. <laughs> with the triplets. To the point that I, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Hi, my name's Josh Simpson. I'm a PA here at Fredericksburg Orthopedic Associates. Okay, Josh. Patients usually prefer endoscopic carpal tunnel releases over open carpal tunnel releases. Um... Your ultrasound study and your nerve test. Wait, I think I'm in my chair. Best.